it's been a few weeks since I put together a proper update. Let's show you what I've been up to. On the last layout update, I talked about the new plans for the Canada Iron and Metal Company scrapyard build and showed you the new CP shed with various LEDs that were installed in Parkdale East. There are three projects on the go at the moment. The scrapyard build, installation of the final table for the layout, and an updated track and electrical plan. For the scrapyard lot, I've been doing my fair share of research on the Canada Iron and Metal Company property, primarily looking at Google Earth images from Street View. The fence enclosing the property was the first item to build. You can see from the images that the fence sits on top of a brick retaining wall. I used balsa wood strips as a base and glued flexible vinyl brick casting onto the wood strips to create a similar look. For the fence itself, I used a Walther's fence kit and drilled the appropriate size holes and inserted the posts. Using a little bit of wood filler, I lightly applied a layer to the top and edges, giving the wall a more stone-like look. I'll glue the fence onto the posts and weather and paint the fence to a more prototypical look. Some of the other kits that are being built for the lot is a loading crane for the rail spur and a metal compactor unit from Walther's. The last table for the new expansion plan is complete. The new table brings the extension out 12 feet and will have the city scene and main passenger station at the front of the table. Built to existing specs, this final table measures 4 feet by 4 feet. Constructed with 2x4s and 2x3s for framing. Each table will be bolted together and secured in place. With this last table complete, that pretty much wraps up all the bench work for the layout. With the new table installed, I went ahead and modified the existing track plans on any rail. Here's the updated version. The main passenger station and shed will be located at the front of the table. The placement of the rails is relatively simple. Track 1 is for departures, and track 2 is for arrivals. Unfortunately, space is limited so the amount of coaches that can be held in the station will vary, roughly between 4 to 5 coaches per track at a time. There is a third track for some extra storage of locomotives or baggage coaches. Switching moves in this area will see coaches being removed in the opposite direction to allow for locomotives to switch back and move towards the turntable and reverse direction for the next departing train on track 1. The only prototypical rule that would be compromised is the turnout from track 2 to track 3. Coaches would overhang the turnout when arriving on track 2. You wouldn't see coaches holding over a turnout for safety reasons. However, as mentioned, space is limited and it's a small compromise to make the station space more enjoyable. In terms of wiring and electrical, a new system diagram is complete and under constant revision. So far, the existing DCC and DC systems have been mapped out. I created this diagram on Photoshop and started to place essential wiring on the new 12-foot expansion. We'll keep slow motion switch machines on the main and manual throws on the secondary turnouts. The rail feeders will be connected to the main bus lines as well as the UR90 control panel from Digitracks. We've also added a few new power bars to each table. The wiring plan is constantly changing as the build moves forward and we'll be updating it regularly. I have a shout out this month, Etobicoke Central Railways wants to congratulate Kobo and HO for reaching 100 subscribers. Building a prototypical layout of Coburg, Ontario and focused on Canadian national operations, Derek of Kobo and HO will take you through his meticulous layout build and layout plans. Derek recently put together a great video on how to build a DCC++ system beginner's guide, relevant to plans for operations on his future layout. Be sure to check out Kobo and HO and follow the channel for all his latest videos. So that wraps up this layout update. The build has been a bit slow, but I always prefer to favor quality and detail over time. Always interested to read your comments on the build, and don't forget to subscribe for the very latest. Also be sure to check out Etobicoke Central Railways on Instagram for daily updates. See you next time.